Well, hello, my lovelies, and happy Spooktober. And are we ready? Yes, today we are doing part seven of the mini series called There's a Locked Door in My New Apartment. I hope you enjoy the new channel trailer and the channel art. And without any further delay, let's just hop into it. Five, four, three, two. There was something white on the ground. I approached it and realized it was a piece of paper. I bent down and pointed my torch at it. There were two words scrawled on it. Two simple words. Go back. I read the words aloud and stared at them in bewilderment. Who left this here? Either way, it was time for me to go back since it was almost 4 a.m. and the rope was probably almost at its end. I stood up and just then I felt something which made my blood run cold. The rope which held my hand was gently tugged. I hoped it was my imagination, so I stood still and pointed the flashlight down. My hand was trembling, but not moving. And then I felt the rope tightening and saw my hand moving back and forth once, and then once more. And then again, I held my breath, listening to the creaking sound in the distance behind me, which echoed all around. Suddenly, my hand was tugged violently enough to almost make me lose my footing and I quickly wiggled out of the rope and watched it as it fell limply and slid across the ground, disappearing in the dark beyond the flashlight beam. I trembled violently and not from the cold. The beam of my flashlight aggressively bounced up and down from my trembling hands as the sound of door creaking got louder and louder and louder until it felt like whatever was making that sound would just jump into my line of sight any second. I stared like that, breathing heavily, and then the creaking suddenly came to a halt. It was replaced by another sound, but I couldn't tell what it was. It sounded like something being dragged on the floor, and then I saw it. A hand appeared in the light, a pale, skinny hand with dirty and ruined fingernails that looked like they had been crawling and clawing at something solid. Another hand appeared, trying to get a fern grip on the ground with bony fingers. Very slowly, the hands dragged into view, and then I saw a head. A head with a messy, head of black hair which fell unevenly on the floor covering the face which was looking down i couldn't do anything but stare as the head lifted up revealing one bloodshot eye which was not obscured by the messy hair and a face as pale as the floor below it. The woman then opened her mouth 
and from it came a loud door creaking noise. That was enough to break me out of my trance. I turned around and ran as fast as I could in the other direction, not caring where I would end up. The creaking noise followed closely behind, never growing louder or more quiet, but being present just enough to muffle my own panicked breathing as I ran as fast as I could. I sprinted through the corridor like that until my lungs started burning. And then in front of me, I saw a small white dot. As I ran, the dot got bigger and bigger, revealing a door-shaped hole. And I knew that I had to reach it, for it was my only means of escaping. The creaking persisted right at my heels and I knew that if I slowed down or stopped to take a break, that woman would catch up with me. The exit was so close now, I pushed my unwilling legs to continue going, holding my flashlight unsteadily in my hands while I was running. The white light which emanated from the door offered salvation. I knew about that, so I had to reach it before that thing caught up with me. Just as I was completely blinded by the bright light from the door, I crossed the threshold, practically stumbling over something and painfully falling to the ground. I turned around just in time to see the woman from before standing a few feet away from me. She produced a weak creaking sound before retreating back into the darkness. And then the door abruptly shut with a loud bang, leaving me in total silence. I took a moment to calm myself down and absorb what had just happened. I stood up and as I was about to turn around, a voice behind me spoke. You fell for it, huh? I turned around just in time to see a man standing in the room. I stared at the man under the dim light, who simply flashed me a smile. Although he couldn't have been older than 30, he had heavy bags under his eyes. His hair was messy like hers, and his cheekbones very visible, like sunken. Who are you? I asked him and observed my surroundings, still breathing heavily from the ordeal just a moment before. I seemed to be located in an apartment, but it looked like it had been abandoned for a while. The walls were dilapidated, cracked and stained with various colors. A musty couch sat in the corner of the room and the coffee table next to it looked like it would collapse if you leaned on it with one finger. The kitchen was in no better shape either, with the oven and other surfaces being covered in rust. The rest of the apartment was so empty, like someone had selectively taken things out. Where are we? I asked. My name's Martin, the man responded. And we are in room 102. The room isn't occupied yet since it still needs some cleaning done. 
but it should be ready soon. Ready soon? Are you kidding? I let out a chuckle at the absurdity of his response. Seriously, though, what's going on here? And with that, we are ending video seven. Happy Spooktober. There is a surprise coming up. And also, I meant to have my editor put a poll in there asking if you wanted to hear what happened on the trail in the last video, the pre video uh, five. And so it was two videos ago. Um, if you do, please comment down below. And in the meantime, enjoy. It's gonna be special. All the little surprises I'm hoping work out. Um, and well, you'll just see. I love having you stop by and come back soon and stay a while. All right. Have a good one. Bye now.